We're cut right now, right? Yeah. Cool. I'm gonna take a I'm gonna rip of the sweet, sweet marijuana. Pause it. Hey guys, what's going on? It's the Midwestern Piper here. Um, I have a special guest today coming all the way from um, Detroit. He's a local comedian around here. Um, you know, it's Kevin Key. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem, man. We're, he's actually going to smoke his first pipe today. He's never smoked one before, so we're going to teach him how. We're going to let him pick out his pipe and let him pick out the tobacco he wants to smoke. So I guess let's just get right into it, man. So go ahead and pick out the pipe that you want to smoke with. I'm going to be smoking this Dr. Grabo. It's like a billiard style. I think it's called the Cardinal. Um, I like it. I just picked it up, and it's a really good smoke. It's a um, briar. You're going to pick that one? Yeah, that's also a Dr. Grabo. That's a that's, Dr. Grabo Omega. That's what it looks like. Yeah, that looks similar, like maybe two, uh, two uh, siblings twin. that were split up at birth or something <laughs> twin like that. Flames. Twin flames. Twin flames. <laughs> uh, yeah. They're briar. They're made out of briar. And briar is a root of, um, I can't remember the tree. But I, you know, but it is the root of this tree in Italy and Greece, I believe. And the reason they use briar is because um, it's is very hard to catch on fire. And he didn't do his research before the show, but it's actually the root of all evil was what he was looking for. That's, no, yeah, that's what he said. To be, that's what he said before the show. I like how it has grill marks on the uh, the face. I don't know terminology. It's just the face of it. That is the. Um, that's little, the bowl. It's, it's uh yeah the bowl. It's got little char marks on the on the bowl. Yeah, it's it's nice. It looks like a Mickey, Mickey D's sandwich. Flame broiled. Flame broiled. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is these are these are really good pipes. They're cheap too, like thirty some dollars for a really nice briar pipe. Mm. They smoke well too. Um, all right, let's get into it. Let's pass around the tobacco and see. Pick which one you want to smoke. Here's all right. One. You can uh sm smell them. Usually go with the scents. That's usually the first in initial uh, scent there. What do you What do you think that one smells like? Well, this kind of brings me back to you know when we would steal a pack of Winston's from the local uh, <laughs> corner store and go in the woods and just smoke the the you know the living crap out of them. You know, <laughs> yeah. And pardon my mid, mid, Midwestern uh, cussing there. <laughs> oh, you're good. That's, that's cool. and Riff. That's some. Uh, that's some what they call over-the-counter tobacco or your drugstore blend. Okay, okay. Right, so this is another drugstore blend. That's a Cherry Cavendish. Cherry Cavendish. Yeah, that's a Cherry Cavendish. Mmm, now this one smells like you've just been, you know, maybe taking a nap in a bowl of potpourri or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Mmm. It's not too bad. I and like I would cherry. definitely do about 30 minutes in this bag, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you, know? you turn off that camera, I might take one right now. Uh. <laughs> yeah, this uh, this one right here is Mason Edwards. Um, it's a tobacconist. It's a local one out of Ann Arbor. Okay. Um, he, he lives at Mason. Lives in Ann Arbor. Yeah, he he has a little um, local shop. Mmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's kind of like a blueberry kind of smell to it. Yeah, I, it smells like Mason Edwards just kind of stayed over at your house, and now your pillowcase kind of. It's got that fragrance to it, you know? <laughs> what the heck is this one? Now, my question, uh, real quick, how do people know they're not just smoking tea? Because this all kind of looks like tea to me, I'll be honest. We could cut that out. I, yeah, no, um, yeah, it does kind of look like tea. It does. I mean, but I think, I go with the smells, man. This is, tobacco has like a certain strong aroma to it. You can kind of... Mm -hmm. It does have, like, it would be more of, like, if it was a tea, it'd be kind of, like, a robust tea, but, um... Yeah, it would be, like, a, maybe, like, a root beer or something, but the, the tea version of it. There's another blend right there. Okay. Yeah. This one smells a little earthy. A little yeah. dirty. A little dusty, <laughs> if I may say so. You might have got this one from Pinckney, Michigan. Because <laughs> that's... That's basically the aroma you get. That's one of my. This is also. This is another drugstore brand. It's one of my favorite ones. Okay. But it is like a. It's more of a vanilla y mm. vanilla -y, um, scent here. This is a premium blend. Um, this is um, Peter Stokeby's Luxury Twist Flake. 
Okay. That is that. That's one of my favorites. Now, will you explain to me this? Uh, I don't know anything about the arts. You know, what's up with these little wafers here? Well, the wafers, those are just how they're cut. So, like, they're that's all the tobacco in there. It's cut like a ribbon, mm -hmm. but then they press it down um, with Cavendish and kind of make it into those little uh, flakes like mm. that. They're pretty good. I this is my by far my favorite smoke. My second favorite smoke is this one. It's Golden Days of Yore. If you haven't tried it, definitely get yourself a tin of that. It's super good. Smell that one. It's got a little minty flavor to it. I think it smells a little bit like Copenhagen. Out of oh, the yeah. Can. Oh, yeah. But it's extremely a... <laughs> long cut. <laughs> yeah. It's ribbon cut, but, you know, it... Man. That's a, that's a menthol right there. This is the new ports of the, uh, of the, uh, the underworld right here. Yeah, it's pretty good. And, it, and it's, it may look like cat food in these cans. It is not cat food. You could tell that almost immediately by looking at it. This one smells a little bit more like Copenhagen ish. That one's the GLP's Virginia Cream. That one's a super good one, too. I've been meaning to pick up some more of that. Mm -hmm. um, and you can actually sell our tobaccos. So, like, what you do is you just put this in like a, a cellar, I guess, which would just be a shoebox and hold it for five years, and it actually gets better over time. Oh, wow. Yeah. So. Worked on one of my cousins, same strategy. Yeah. <laughs> That's sick, man. Hello. <laughs> um, this is the last one. Buttered rum. Butter rum. Buttered rum. I like this one. You like buttered rum? I mean, I like it. I actually, I think I like this first one, this uh, the Bork best and actually. <laughs> you like the Bork and Riff? I mean, just based on smells though. This is this has nothing to do with the taste, the flavors of it, you know. Well, but this does smell good. That does smell good. I want you to go off of your instinct here. So which tobacco do you think that you would choose? Well, I'm going to go with my gut. I'm going to go straight with my gut. This bourbon whiskey. You can choose that bourbon whiskey. All right. This is Borkum and Riff. Borkum Riff bourbon whiskey. Um, it's got a real strong smell. You can smell the, you can smell the bourbon coming straight off, but I think it smells like red man chewing tobacco a little mm. bit. Um, well, yeah, it says the Vorkum Riff Bourbon Whiskey recipe consists of 35% black Cavendish tobaccos, carefully mixed with 65% Virginia. And as a final treat, genuine Kentucky bourbon whiskey is added. The flavor is the Kentucky bourbon notes. All right, so you're going to have a fun time with this one. Here we go. Let's get ready to smoke. Let's pack the bowl. All right, so you're smoking the Vorkum Riff Bourbon Whiskey. I'm actually going to smoke this Peter Stokeby's luxury twist like i love this stuff it tastes it smells like caramely mapley um it tastes a lot like i can taste the nuttiness in it i really enjoy it it's one of my favorite smokes for sure it's not an all-day smoke because i tried it I tried smoking it like three four times in a day and it just gave me a, a headache so it's definitely not an all-day smoke but it's like one of those one or two bowls maybe after you get done eating or something like that but yeah so i'm gonna teach him how to load this bowl up cool man. all right so what you do is uh Get your tobacco out. You can put a little on the table. We're not too worried about the the mess, but you can like uh, get enough. Get a, get a little uh, little enough for a bowl there. You know. All right. See, mine's a twist flake, so I gotta crumple it up and spin it around and stuff. You know, and and uh, if if we were on a famous cooking show or something like that, they would already have one prepared. <laughs> but well, this is part of the fun <laughs> it's part of the fun of pipe smoking man you get all the senses going you get the touch the smell the yeah. feel the pack the light the burn the smoke the cancer oh yeah yeah <laughs> pack it all into one you know and i'm sure there's some kind of five dollar bundle for that <laughs> oh yeah there's well there you're gonna with be everything else yeah you're gonna be paying for the smoke I, i'm gonna need a couple of dollars cause oh yeah stuff's expensive yeah well, that's no problem for me. <laughs> uh. All right, so now that you got that stuff ready to go, this is how you pack a bowl, all right? So you get your first little pinch, all right? Oh, yeah, sorry. That's all right. I'm just so caught up in the moment. Get your first little pinch, and you're going to put it in. You're just going to, like, drop it in the bowl. And now this first little pack is what they call it, like, shaking the hand of a baby. So, like, it's going to be real, like, real light poke down there. You're not going to punch it down in. You're going to get it all the way to the bottom. But you're not going to, like, press it. Right? Gotcha. 
So the second one's gonna be like shaking the hand of a woman. So it's a little bit a little bit tighter of a pack, but not too No crazy. eye contact. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we don't need a me too. You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh yeah. So that one's a little bit tighter, so you can pack that one in a little bit more. Yeah, there you go. That looks good. And then this last one's shaking the hand of a man. So you're going to pack it just a little bit tighter. I'm going to jam those knuckles together. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. Now it's about ready to rock and roll. Be like steam engines over here. Are you a cigarette smoker or anything? You know, I used to be for many years, but I've quit. Been off the cigarettes for three years now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, they say uh, it's one of the hardest things to do in life, so I'm just hoping that makes up for all the other things I didn't do in life. You know? <laughs> yeah. I did the hardest thing. It is super hard to quit smoking. I, I've smoked cigarettes for 10 years, but I just recently started smoking pipes. You don't actually inhale it. You just puff it, so... You can inhale it if you want. I, I do sometimes. What I like to do, like my favorite thing to do, and I don't know if it's unorthodox or what, but I like to like do a little tiny like fresh French inhale. So like mm. I'll breathe it out of my mouth, basically just smell my breath. Like that's what I'll just, you know. Oh, yeah. And then it kind of breathe in a little bit of the smoke through the nose, but not like a whole hit and because mm -hmm. you get that nice smell because pipe tobacco smells good. That's what it's notorious. That's what it's known for. You know, you ever you have a grandpa that smokes a pipe or anything like that? Uh, I never did, but it is it is oddly uh, correlated with the uh, with the uh, grandpas. Yeah, the grandpas do. Yeah, yeah. It's a nostalgic thing. Like when people smell this um, aroma of pipe tobacco, a lot of people stop and is like, "Man, that brings me back to my grandpa or my great grandpa or something like that." Because a lot of older gentlemen smoke pipe tobacco. You know, so. It's her. All right, this goes for the this uh, this is the light now. All right, so what this first one's called the false light, right? So you're gonna put it in your mouth, and you're gonna light just the top bit until the top is all charred, mm -hmm. right? So you're gonna breathe in. It's doing a beautiful job, folks. Great technique, circling around. And these are the things you wanna look for, the subtleties. That's not too bad, so see how that's charred right there? Yes. And you're gonna tamp that down. That's the false light right there. Good. Tamp that down. That's called a tamper or a check tool. That's all you need for pipe smoke, and it comes with a tamper, a spoon, and like a little poker. All right, so now this is going to be the final, the, the big light, the actual real light here. So you're just going to, same motion, get everything lit, but just do some dregs and let it roll. You know what, I, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you don't have to tell me five times. This is what <laughs> I went to school for. <laughs> You don't want to tamp it down a tiny bit. Don't push, just like a little, little guy. Now yours is actually a Virginia, so it's gonna burn a little bit hotter. Um, so you kind of want to. Yeah, there you go. And then uh. Now like you know how like a uh, in a, in a glass pipe, they have the little uh. The little toke. The little toke hole? Toke hole? Yeah, yeah. So on, on a pipe, they don't have that. So you use your fingers. Ah. So just watch because it can get kind of hot in the beginning because the, that ember is right there by your fingers. Yeah. And, so. uh, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but back in the day when people used to smoke pipes, they would toke and they would actually, you know, tell people to, you know, get lost. They would... <laughs> And pardon me for being so vulgar, but it's all right, man. We can be a little bit vulgar on here. That's just a, you know, it's a term of endearment where I come from. 
All right, so Kevin is also a comedian down in Detroit. Um, tell us a little bit about, about that. When did you start doing that? Well, I'm actually a comedian from more the Ann Arbor area. Um, oh, Ann Arbor area. Mm -hmm. What is that, University of Michigan? The University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, I live a little outside that city, so that's kind of where I got started doing some stand-up open mic comedy. And if you don't know, I actually met this guy doing some stand-up open mic uh, comedy. Pretty funny guy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so uh, Detroit is a fun place to do comedy. Really, Michigan was a great place to do comedy. Um, and Pre we just, we hope it comes back. Have they been doing anything lately? I know they've been doing, they did like the Zoom calls or whatever. And I tried that once and it was kind of a bust. Yeah. Um, Don't be afraid to relight if we got to, but I'm gonna have to. Yeah. <laughs> and this is rookie, you know. This is this is seasoned versus, you know. Don't, um, let, don't get it twisted. This is like two weeks into it, so. But it comes after after a couple times. So how, what do you like? What do you think about the taste so far? Like, so they, there's two things that there's a couple things people do when it comes to uh, judging the taste and everything about a tobacco. So they call the room note. The room note is when you walk into the room and the tobacco is being smoked, what does it smell like in there? So do you smell anything? You know, if I try real hard, I feel like if I just try to feel with my nostrils what they're telling me. You know, it feels, it feels, uh, um, it, it's good. It kind of, it kind of reminds me personally of being out, outside at a bar, kind of. Uh, maybe, maybe like in the fall time, you know. So is that thing staying lit for you now? Oh yeah. Yeah, we got this thing lit. Okay, cool. So, um, there are some celebrities that smoke some pipes. I'll name some off here. Maybe you, they might sound familiar. Okay. All right. Um. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back with weapons and pipes <laughs> and pipes to smoke. <laughs> he loves cigars too. I and can't keep my pipe lit. <laughs> he loves his pipes, his cigars, and his and his maid. He loves his. <laughs> That's a good joke, everybody. He just gave that to you. <laughs> yeah. Um, Nick Mullen. Okay, real good comedian. Yeah, he's yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> um, Chesty Polar, he's actually a very decorated uh, Marine. All right. In the Marine Corps. And Chesty Polar sounds like maybe the name of some uh, some some girl off Baywatch. <laughs> yeah, well, I wouldn't say that around any Marines. Yeah, definitely not. No, he's his own thing, <laughs> but I'm also just saying it also sounds like it could be a very attractive woman doing a, a very noble profession. Yeah, I don't know where the name Chesty actually comes. Is Chesty it Ch sounds fake to me. His name's Chesty Puller. Would it be like Chesterfield? Is that like short for or Chester? Chester? Or Chester? Yep. Yeah, Chesty could be Chesty. But why would you go from Chester to Maybe, Chesty? I'm thinking this guy did a lot of push-ups, a lot of benching, you know? And they and were like, like, he would come into the gym and they'd be like, oh, here comes Big Chesty. And he was doing pull-ups, so yeah. he was like Chesty Pull. Yeah. Chester Pull. Chesty, Chesty the pull-up guy. <laughs> and if you're watching, Chesty, I'm very sorry, and thank you for your service. Um, he's long gone, I believe, but he is very well known in the Marine Corps. Um, Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein? Yeah, he Was in the Marines? Pipe. No, no, no. He no, smoked, he's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's smoked smoked the pipe. pipe. Okay. I, he probably could do the Marines. I, I, think, he, I think he did. Yeah, he, Semper Fi. Live or die. Yep. Um, let's see, who else smoked the pipe? It was, <laughs> it was, uh, um, Mark Twain. Mark Twain? Mark Twain, yeah. He smoked a pipe. Very decent writer. Very decent writer. I loved yeah. his section on TV, God. It was a weekly, you know, escape from the normal day to day, so. What was he on TV good? I don't think he was, oh. I was just saying. <laughs> no. I think, I think he was a little bit before TV, God, but. He loved Missouri Meerschaums, which are these corn cob pipes. Okay. These are very fit. These are actually corn cut. Yeah, I wonder when those became popular. Probably if you're uh, farmers if you, used to make them. If you know when these became popular, feel free to comment in below and let us know uh, because we don't know anything around here, and we're trying to learn. But uh, actually, yeah. actually, farmers may, used to make these pipes themselves. Oh, really? And that's how they became um, known. Farmers would get their corn cobs, cut them out. 
cut the bowls and smoke them. Um, they're actually, I think they're dried for a year. And you can kind of still see the texture of the corn cob. Oh, yeah. Uh, I never really put that together. That's why it it's looks... It's actually a corn cob. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And they're really good smokers. Really good. I might actually have that one next. And a lot of people with the corn cobs, they like to smoke them like a typewriter, which I think is really immature. <laughs> you know? Just grow up and smoke it like an adult. Yeah, like uh, Frosty the Snowman. He had the corn cob pipe in the button nose. Yeah, how did he not melt... I always thought... If you're out there and you know how Frosty smoked a pipe and didn't melt, go ahead and comment below, because we want to know. <laughs> yeah. You would think he would just, he'd just like have half a face melted. Um, <laughs> like he was at an EDM show, you know? Yeah, or a burn victim. <laughs> Side joke, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, that's not funny. For we the can't, younger yeah. audience. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Frosty was another famous guy that smoked. I always wondered why they gave Frosty a pipe, because doesn't that set a bad example for the children? Yeah, I guess it does, but it also makes you feel like this guy is wise. I mean, we take advice from old men who smoke pipes. You know, why wouldn't we do it from Frosty? Was he an adult? Well, he had that old-timey kind of look. He definitely wore a hat that I've seen zero children wear. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I thought he was always, I thought he was like one of their buddies or something. Yeah, like, he kind of played it off like wouldn't that. Wouldn't that be kind of creepy though? Like, would you, if you were a parent, would you be concerned? Well, I think that's how you, that's how you play the line there. You know, it's not, it's not some old man hanging out with a bunch of little kids. It's an old <laughs> man inside a magical snowman, so. Yeah, so I guess that'd be fine. Well, yeah, you know, technically he's not real. <laughs> <laughs> so. He isn't? Well, I don't know. I mean, I guess you could debate whether Frosty the Snowman... If you know if Frosty the Snowman was real or not, go ahead and comment below <laughs> in the section, because we want to know these things, dude. Yeah, we do. <laughs> when was the first time you realized that Santa wasn't real? <laughs> uh... I would have to say probably seven or eight, my cousin told me. She just laid it out. She didn't even, you know, care what kind of long-term ramifications were going to come from that. So. <laughs> Are you still uh, hurt over that? I'm a little, I'm a little uh, you know, no, I was, I was just a little cold from it, you know? It kind of ruined Christmas for, for me. I mean, because the magic of, like, wanting to, um, you know, stay up all night with your brothers and sisters and get all excited and um, wonder what you got from Santa, that, that magic, once you find out Santa isn't real, kind of goes away. And, but it's kind of cool as an adult when you can have, like, little children around. Um, mm -hmm. Like, my nephew, like, he's just, like, he's all about the elf on the shelf and the Santa Claus and the magic and the spirit of Christmas. And, um, you know, it's a, lot, it's a lot of fun whenever you have kids that you can see that in them, um, how you felt when you were younger, you know. Yeah, kids have a magical element to them, and it really pops in the holidays. You really see that magical side come out. Um, and I think that's a beautiful thing. Uh, but also, I think there's kind of a vanity nowadays to a lot of people, not just children, but I think it's just the way people are con kind of conditioned to, you know, look out for number one, so to speak. And I feel like uh, the magic of Santa doesn't really need to be there. You know, it's like, I'm getting a bunch of free stuff tomorrow. I'm excited about that. Yeah. I don't care who's bringing it. Yeah, that's true. Um... Holidays have are, are great for me. I mean, I know a lot of people that have bad experiences with holidays. Like, mm. for some reason, though, there's deaths always with like around the holiday times. You don't have to like ash super hard. You just get that top ash going. I see. And then, is this still are you still having problems? It looks like it's staying lit for you. It's good. Yeah. yeah I was just had to. I had to open up some real estate. Yeah, that's not bad. That's uh. It's a nice little pipe, um, but yeah. What do you so? What do you think over overall so far? Good experience or? I like it. I'm a little worried how my throat's gonna feel tomorrow, but I'm enjoying this time here, and it's it is kind of like a it's got a cigar smoking kind of vibe yeah. to it. Yeah, it's nice, but it's a little more classy, you know. It's more like Sherlock Holmes, like we're trying to solve a mystery or something, you know. I definitely feel like I'm wondering a lot more with this in my hand. You know, I'm a lot more curious. 
And if you know why I'm curious, <laughs> go ahead and comment below. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, I'll tell you what, you know what I'm saying? You can't take him anywhere. Um, we, yeah, we met in the comedy scene. It, I forget what show it was. It was, was it the Cabbage Fetch? It that was, was one of the nights that we had a conversation, right? Right around the... It was some kind of show where 30 comedians... Shout out to Max Comedy Bar in Lansing. Uh, who knows if they made it. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> that was a good little scene. It was a cool little scene. Yeah, and then it was like all the college students were there. And um, I think I had a good show that night. I, I think it was one of my better shows, I think. It was just the little college... Uh, age students because they I had very gross humor and like certain people don't like that but these college age kids you know they were dying over it but um but yeah it's a fun time I just the comedy just kind of stressed me out like I was getting to the point where I was spending too much time at a bar I was getting drunk I was allegedly driving home when I shouldn't be um you know so well, the comedy scene is fun, and I think there's a couple of, there's two ways to look at, you know, the comedy scene. There's the boring side, which for me is the interesting side. That's the behind the scenes side. And then there's the fun side where, you know, the seven minutes, 10, 15, 20 minutes you see of, like, material being done. But, you know, a lot of the fun is in the work when it comes to things, you know. So I think that, uh, like, when we met, for instance, it was just a lot more fun because that's the side I enjoy, the behind the scenes, the trying to plan different, you know, projects or activities and, and you yeah, know. working and things like that. Yeah, I, I always found that kind of fun. Um, there's all different kinds. In the, it brings everyone together. Like, well, it's all different kinds that come to the comedy scene. Yeah, and I think the, the older I get, the more I realize you just have to find a cool uh, community of people who have a like-minded view and... It, it, it makes it gives you something to look forward to on a day to day basis when you when you're involved with a constant community of people who have like minded goals. Yeah, that's kind of like on the YouTube pipe community. That's everybody's kind of close knit. Everybody knows everybody. There's certain people better than others or more popular than others, but that's okay because they uplift the people that don't don't have very many viewers and things like that. I think that's kind of cool. Um, I actually really like and enjoy a lot of. Um, the content out there shout out to cast the cassidy piper um paladin piper buckeye piper um you know the whole crew briar blues i like the whole crew you know you guys are pretty funny and um bring in some very good education and knowledge dropping some knowledge on us you know what i'm saying it's cool man it's cool to it's cool to be involved in anything you know just to be a part you know what a blessing so yeah it really is and uh, you know the very supportive group. I'm glad I found it. It was actually my dad that brought me into this. My dad was a cigar smoker for the longest time, and then he started smoking pipes. I recently went down to go visit him, and he was like, hey, you know, try this pipe out because I was out of cigs. And I really liked it, and he gave me one of his pipes. That's this one right here. I'm going to keep it forever, Dad, but I am definitely don't smoke it that often because I, I, I'm going to be honest, I don't like it. It's See these little divots here? There's little divots on this stem, right? See? And that's for people with false teeth. Ah, I see. So it's easier to clench. Nice. So they can just go like Get that. Get that resting marker. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's real lightweight, you know. But I don't have false teeth, so I can get the real heavy bowls. And, yeah. You know. And one thing I enjoy about this, uh, being a not normal pipe smoker, is I really do enjoy... Uh, I'm not feeling lightheaded uh, right now. You know, if I smoked a cigarette, I would be... Excuse me. That was uh, very professional. Let me start over. One thing I like about this that I really do enjoy is I'm not getting as lightheaded as I used to. You know, when I would smoke a cigar or if I smoked a cigarette, I'd be all over the place. But this uh, pipe tobacco seems to be a nice, even keel, good balance. So somebody who doesn't smoke uh, cigarettes or anything like that can kind of get involved in it and not suffer the whole yeah. way through it. Yeah, because yeah, you don't have to inhale. The nicotine actually just hits, goes through your tongue, I believe. It hits your tongue. And um, it's... I wouldn't say it's good for you, but by any means. I wouldn't say smoking is good for you at all. But, like, the way I counterbalance this is I work out every other day. So, like, I feel like the long-term effects will be slowed down if you counteract smoking with any type of exercise go out even if it's as little as 
walking a mile, mm. you know, every day. Or um, I go to the gym. I like to lift and work out. And I've actually been teaching my brother how to work out. So that's kind of a cool experience. And, like, it pushes me a little bit harder, too, because – like just watching him work out and then whenever i'm doing it like if we're doing squats and i'm like we got to get to 50. yeah if i quit and stop before 50 he'll stop before 50. so i have to get you have 50. to you have to motivate yeah because he, yeah. he looks up to me so he's like because who's going to carry the boats yeah i yeah. <laughs> wait what <laughs> Um, yeah, so <laughs> shout out David Goggins. <laughs> okay, so that's that's a re David Goggins reference. Yeah, yeah, David Goggins. If you don't know him, look him up. Uh, great, Very great motivated. fella. Uh, but yeah, you know, I don't when know the, how he does it. When the storms come and the village gets raided, who's going to carry the boats and get the people off to safety? Okay, because that's one thing you have to keep in mind. Okay, I like it. I like yeah. it. David Goggins is the man. He's. Um, we're going to link the Joe Rogan uh, podcast down below <laughs> so go check out get david goggins um yeah he's sick man i don't know how he gets his energy though he's like what is he 50 yeah i think that guy just runs all the time and he used to be chubby now he's like a string bean he's but like he's the fit. real life version of uh forrest gump <laughs> yeah he runs every every time i check out his instagram he's just always running and screaming he's a way more strict forrest gump but both veterans uh, <laughs> both well-decorated fellows who uh, found themselves just running because they wanted to. And God bless them. And uh, yeah, it's good if you're gonna do something like smoking pipes. I would I would I would recommend maybe eating a few raw tomatoes and going for a walk or something to kind of try to balance that out. Do some breathing exercises. Yeah, because it can. Um, even though you don't inhale every time, you do catch yourself. If you're around any smoke, like even secondhand smoke, you, you're going to get some sort of stuff inside your lungs. And so. we'll put a link to secondhand smoke below. You can catch that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, do you have anything to link? Yeah, I would love it <laughs> if anybody wanted to go over to my Instagram page and look over Kevin Jokes Key, K-E-Y. Uh, and, and give it a follow, and I'll follow you back, and that's real. And uh, I'd like to be more involved in this community. I would love to. Yeah, we're going to have him again on here. Um, I didn't really expect to have any guests or any do any sit-downs with anybody on this channel yet, but this channel is kind of it's new, so we don't really know what direction it's going to go in. I feel like we're going to have a little bit more of this. We're going to bring in you know some comedians to talk to, or I would like to take this camera out and go to some local tobacco shops and um, just interview the people, the tobacconists, you know, the people that actually blend the tobacco. Like this uh, Mason Edwards, you know, I'm going to go try to go visit them and see how they mix their tobacco. Apparently they've been doing it for over 60 years or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a really nice community. I, I enjoy it so far. And um, we don't know where we're going, but we're just going to keep moving forward. If, if there's any type of specialty tobaccos or any blends that you guys would like to see me smoke or a guest smoke on this show, let me know and um, we'll definitely be able to get it and get it ordered and, um, and test it out, let you guys know how we feel about it. Um, I really, so far, have only tried Virginia's and Cavendish Aromatics. I haven't tried any Burley's, Latakia's, or Orientals yet. It's something that's on the list um, but I'm trying to get my palate right, and um, I'm really liking the Virginias. I I really like this Peter Stokeby Luxury Twist Flake. It's just beautiful, and it tastes great. Very caramely, rich, some kind of a nuttiness to it, and I love the smell. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, did, so you enjoyed it. What, what would you say about your experience? So it's out of ten. I, you know, 8 out of 10, I would recommend to a friend. I only say 8 out of 10 because I didn't want it to be unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, but that's what this experience has been for me, unbelievable. So you know what? I'm going to change it to 10 out of 10. That's what I would do. Okay. That's yeah. what I like to hear. So Absolutely. you may want to do this uh, again sometime. I would love to. Yeah, I might, I might buy a pipe on my way home and, and, uh, and uh, figure out how to pack them correctly. Yeah, I, I feel like you'll get it. It only took me about five tries. But, okay, okay. But yeah, but um, anyway... Uh, Thanks for coming on, Kevin. I appreciate it. And Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. And hopefully we'll have you again. This has uh, been Midwestern Piper. Thanks for uh, tuning in and listening to me and Kevin go at it. Smoke a pipe. It's his first time, so give him a hand. We'll see you guys later. Midwestern Piper, signing off.